Aloha guys. I'm about to do some plumeria and I happen to have some paint left over from the last tutorial or playing with Risa that I did. So on the base of that rock you'll see some Palmer's Paints acrylic aquamarine paint with just a little bit of the Ceramcoat blue flash metallic color shift paint. And I, then I just took a little bit of ultramarine blue and on a dry, stiff bristle brush, I swiped it on the top. Now I'm about to do the white sea foam or the crests of the waves, if we can try to visualize my version of an ocean. <laughs> and it's a color that's called, it's by Apple Barrel, called Antique Parchment. It's a little bit creamier than a bright white. And I'm taking a sea brush or a sea sponge excuse me and I'm squeezing out the water so that it's just barely damp I don't want it dripping wet I just want the sea sponge to be softened up a bit and I'm moving around in my fingers so I get the part of the sea sponge that I like that just has a little bit of texture to it barely getting some of that antique parchment on there just from the lid I don't even need to Pour it into a dish to get the paint because I'm really using so little. In fact, I'm even daubing off some of that paint. And as you can see, it just barely touches the edges of the sea sponge. And in kind of a rotating motion with my wrist, I'm just going to barely dab on that antique parchment just randomly. A little bit here, a little bit there. Not too heavy because we still want to see the water coming through. Just bringing it down onto the sides a little bit. And then the crests of the waves a little bit up there in that deeper blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that sponge around in my hand so that I have just the water, the barely damp part of it no more paint on the sponge and I'm just going over where I dabbed to soften it a bit and blend it a little bit. So as you can see just that barely dampened sponge is softening that white so that it's not such a harsh color against the blue of the water. Just swoosh it around a little bit, smudge it a little bit, get it look a little more looking a little bit airier. Same thing on those crests on the waves. Just soften them a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. This whole rock is just a very imperfect haphazard kind of application of paint. Just smoothing that out. Excuse my dog squeaking his toy in the background. Just softening it a little bit more as I go until I'm happy with it. And that's my other dog snoring. So that's lovely background music for you. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we're going to add these palm fronds. And I'm really only using one shade of green of an acrylic paint pen. And then I'm going to use a white and black gel pen to just give the accents and the uh, the highlights and and the, the shadows. So the green I'm using is by Magic Fly. This is a pretty cool paint marker if you guys haven't seen this one. It has an angle tip on one end and then it has the fine bullet point on the other end for fine lining. And depending on how you hold the marker you get either a finer or thicker coat. What I'm doing is just a slightly curved line to do my palm fronds. And then I'm just going to do tiny little lines coming up out of that spine on either side of the spine. Do not have to be perfect, does not have to meet that spine, just in the general area. Now we're going and doing the other side of the palm frond. And 
Now here we go with the rest of the palm fronds. Sped it up for you a little bit so you don't have to watch me do lines the whole time. But it's the same principle on each of them. One center spine and then little lines along the side. Now we're done with that. I'm going to take these gel pens. You may have used them before. I use these a lot for my lettering, but also for accents. These are the Uniball Signo UM153 pens. Freeze framed that for you because these are really good pens to have in your arsenal, especially with lettering. But it's great for just little accents here too. So with the black one, I'm going right over the spine as well as each of the lines on either side of the spine of the frond. Do the same thing on all four of the fronds. And it's just kind of in between the green. Some of it might overlap the green lines. It's okay. Again, just very loose placement of your color gives a nice little impact. Now with the white one, I'm not going over the spine. I'm just going to go over and in between on the little lines that are on the side of that spine. because I don't want that spine to completely disappear on us. If I did the white down the center like I did with the green and the black, it would tend to disappear. This gives it a little bit more definition because the white's really just like a highlight. And highlighting doesn't hit on that lower part of that spine. Okay, we're done with those palm fronds. There you go. Now we're going to move on to the star of the show, which is the Plumeria. And I'm going to use a white Posca pen. The white Posca will show up much better against that antique parchment of the sea foam. So my placement of the flower is just wherever I like it. If there are any parts of the rock that I wasn't too happy with, the like base of the palm fronds or some of the sea foam, these plumerias can be positioned wherever it's going to strategically cover a spot that you might not have liked so much. Just do whatever you feel. I usually do these types of things in odd numbers. I'm just looking at the rock, seeing where I want them positioned. They don't have to be in a particular pattern. They can go down the side a little bit. Even though I usually do odd numbers on this one, six seemed to look like it worked. So that's what I left it at. By the time the first coat is dry, on those plumerias, I go over it, starting where I did my first flower, and do a second coat with that Posca white. Doesn't have to be perfect, guys. This is far from perfect, and that is okay. Okay, we are done with our white on the plumeria. Plumeria have a really pretty soft yellow center. Not quite as yellow as that sun bright yellow ceram coat. So I mixed it with a little bit of that antique parchment. And it does not take a lot, you guys. Trust me, look at this. I'm going to unscrew it now because I need so little, I'm just going to squirt out a tiny little dot of this. And with a small brush, whichever brush you prefer, I'm just putting a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the white until I have a nice pale, pale, pale yellow. I'm just coming on the inside of those white petals and bringing it down to the center of the flower. Very tiny amount. The 
such a tiny amount, I'm not even having to reload my brush before I finish off all of these flowers. Just the slightest hint of yellow. And then just to deepen that yellow a little bit more, I'm going to take that sun bright yellow by itself and just inside of the more muted yellow, just adding a little bit, teeny tiny bit, coming toward the center with a little bit darker yellow. Camera's not really picking up the difference between the two yellows, but it's there. When you see it in person, it, it shows up a little bit better. Forgive my dog, Cheesy. She's a boxer. She likes to make noises as if she's a pig. All right, finishing up that yellow. Now what we're going to move on to is the very center of those plumeria. And I use this dark red by Shuttle Art. It's almost like a rust, a little bit of a brown red, but not quite a brown red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot very tiny dots in the center of each flower. But then to get that more muted color on top of those dots, I want to get my brush loaded with water. And I don't know if you can see that the water is just really dripping off of that brush. And I'm taking just a little bit of the red and I'm putting it in my paint dish with the water being the most important part of this. And I'm dropping it into the center of the flower, just dabbing it with my finger to move it around just a little bit. And it's almost like a watercolor at this point, this diluted acrylic. So you want a little puddle of water right in the center of that flower. And you can either let it dry by itself, or in this case, I'm going to use a heat gun just to dry it a little bit faster so I can continue on with the tutorial. So that's drying up all that water, and it's just leaving a really pretty wash to the center of the flower. Now what we're going to do is we're going to outline the petals with this Derwent Graphics graphic line maker and the size of the tip is 0.5. I didn't want to use black because it would be too harsh and I'm doing a double line on the left side of each petal bringing it down into the center. It doesn't have to be exact because once we go over those petals with some glitter that you'll see later on it forgives any imperfection you do. If you don't go right up to the edge of the petal, that's okay. This is just giving the impression of the edges of your petal and the shape of the plumeria's petals. Plus, in between those two gray lines on each petal, we're going to use that white uniball gel pen and it's going to mute out a little bit of the gray and where the gray ends at the center of the petal so it won't look quite so harsh. Okay, now that we have all of our petals with our double gray line on the left side of each petal, We are now going to come back in with that white gel pen right in between the gray.
There we go. See how it softens up those little hard lines that might have been left. We want some of the gray, but we don't need a ton of it. So this gives just enough of it to give those flowers the shape that the plumeria petals have. Now, this is our finishing touch, my favorite glitter glaze. This is by Sargent, and it's an acrylic glitter glaze. It's also medium that you can mix into paints if you want. I get that on Amazon. And then on a, actually this is a makeup brush that I'm using, but it's the perfect shape for a petal. And you just dip it into that glitter glaze, and I use it from the lid because I'm not using that terribly much and very loosely putting it on those petals. It doesn't have to be coloring within the lines or anything like that. Just be very free and easy with it. I don't bring it down into the full flower because I just want those petals to be accented. And then I resin this bad boy up And that is our plumeria. Dreams really do come true. 